good evening everyone today let me just share the screen so the idea was to start with history but everybody is not joined uh, in the sense that uh, the revision that we have been doing for world history but since everybody has not joined so let's keep that towards the end and uh, we shall start with the uh, history of architecture that is in this valley civilization so uh, and uh, we'll keep the quiz towards the end uh, in terms of uh, towards concluding the session so we'll see one or two students more have to join so um, how to do how to go about that we'll just see it now so we'll start with history of architecture in this valley uh, indian architecture we have started so we have summarized the world history first part of world history that we have talked about the rise of classical architecture that is roman architecture we have um, now prior to that we have also studied about, about various civilizations egyptian civilization mesopotamian and all the other civilization that we have studied in uh, mesolithic paleolithic and neolithic era so from there how the um, shift changes uh, changed toward uh, the agrarian society and towards that how it how all the dynamics resulted in the uh, language and development of the vocabulary of architecture from a uh, cave architecture to again towards seeking a shelter in which we have also seen uh, building of huge and humongous scales talking about palace of persepolis and egyptian tombs and everything and gradually talking about the city of rome greece acropolis pantheon parthenon classical columns and all those things and then we have started seeing about uh, the construction of arches which uh, changed the entire narration of uh, the scale of architecture so when the construction of arches started we have also seen uh, the construction of barrel vaulted systems roof dome and from dome we have seen uh, that uh, the characteristic feature from a basilica to the church how it has changed and uh, talking about that we have also seen some shift in renaissance baroque and rococo so this we have covered a large part uh, from the early uh, somewhere around 7th century bc towards uh, 15th 16th century we have covered so the same we'll be doing with indian history of architecture and the same timeline we'll cover after that we'll just see parallelly what is happening in the entire world and what is happening in india so in the world after 15 16 century after the because uh, the territories uh, various subcontinents were also occupied uh, several colonies were formed so all the world history and indian history goes hand in hand parallelly they all culminate together but before that we need to brush up all the narration of indian history of architecture that we'll be seeing so when we are talking about history of architecture we'll be starting first with a very important civilization the name you also must have heard about that so uh, we'll be talking about uh, the indus valley civilization so roughly indus valley civilization if we talk about uh, the entire timeline uh, we are talking about somewhere around 3300 bc and uh, this is the time where you can see that major shift from all the um, different areas in peninsular region have uh, joined in so in terms of uh, you know how from the 4th century bc then again talking about 1300 bc and all these things so here we'll be talking about first of all um, we have also talked about uh, you know different uh, civilization so if you remember we also talked about bronze age civilization so in this valley civilization falls into the category of bronze age civilization and uh, these are the major sites that we'll talking we'll be talking about uh, harappan mohenjo daro mehergad and lothal of all these we have a part of it uh, as the indian subcontinent is also divided so you can see that part of it also falls in um, other countries and in india we have the Lo we have lothal but in terms of talking about all these things the name falls because uh, it is uh, near to the river indus also called as river sindhu so that is why the name has fallen and uh, as in when we are going ahead and all these things uh, we'll see that uh, as the major category or the feature of all the civilizations that they were formed across a major river so whether it is nile in egypt or any other river uh, our major focus over here is the indus river because uh, it also provided resources there was geology also the agrarian society that settled down here could uh, actually depend on water and its other various resources such as sun baked bread mud and other things so uh, were interdependent on each other 
so nature carved a niche in which we found various resources and other things so that also helped shape up the entire uh, architectural characteristic feature so now this was one of the largest and most widespread amongst all the civilizations that we have studied before and the characteristic features are also quite interesting so it gives us a clue also about uh, the type of concepts that we are uh, right now forming in our uh, uh, urban planning concepts and other thing for example the layout of the city and other things so a lot of clues which are being given also in terms of uh, sanitation sewage and all the other things that we'll be looking at one or the other so uh, somewhere around 2600 bc we can see that uh, all these things have also resulted in this forming a large urban center or the capital now why this uh, civilization diminished probably because of flooding that happened in the entire region in this river basin that we have seen so from the arabian sea we can see various tributaries have been formed and from there all the water resources and other things are also happening but uh, because the city was submerged in several layers and it was uh, quite late that all these things have been discovered so probably these are some of the reasons of drought flooding and other things uh, here and there that also resulted in uh, the people traveling from here and settling in other regions which were far off from here so um, now major uh, urban regions as you can see all all uh, in parts of punjab rajasthan and gujarat all these things are located and uh, what we'll see uh, the first uh, site which was to be excavated was harappa which was located along the river ravi so that is how uh, we'll be seeing that uh, how these things are there and i'm sure you are acquainted about all uh, the major sites and the civilization so you must have studied it in your schools as well as again in architecture so talking about from the architectural perspective itself uh, what you can see over here is the planning system so the planning system was again a uh, grid iron planning that uh, we also saw in several roman cities so this was probably one of the first uh, cities which uh, also came up with this entire idea and uh, again this was also called as hippodamian plan the terminology for grid iron planning was also called as this so uh, this you can see a lot of uh, sewer drainage would run parallelly hand in hand with this and uh, you have all these things located in the cardinal direction you all the uh, streets the tertiary nodes as well as primary nodes which were located around this uh, had this particular system and uh, because these were located at right angle in perpetuating perpendicular uh, you know this angle is 90 degree so this was located in right angle and all these cities were uh, situated and you had this interesting planning system so that is why it's called as the grid iron planning system Uh, which is very typical of the harappan civilization as we are talking about the same so um, again uh, the cities were also noted uh, for typical features such as you can see over here uh, you had sun baked bricks so most of the features are quite similar from uh, towards the feature of the early civilization that we have studied in uh, all the examples prior so most of them are similar uh but some of them notable features which are a little bit uh, different are the design of the public spaces uh which we'll see because a lot of clues are given in terms of how they used to store their grains or the public baths and granaries and other things and citadel as well so these are some of the things so you have baked bricks as well as you have sun dried bricks which were used in the construction so you have a uh, wattle doll and brick construction and other things also that are located uh then also you had drainage systems which again were covered so specialized draining system again located on uh, you know different levels and other things uh, these were lined by bitumen and brick so uh, all these things are also giving us a clue about how advanced the entire system was uh, you know we are talking about several several centuries before uh, much before even when uh, the first uh, uh you know free standing a uh, first structural temple was built so uh, from there like we came back again to rock cut architecture and from there we are again going into structural uh, system so uh, even when this construction system is so advanced that we are not seeing all these things uh, much later in again uh, you know uh, we are seeing it towards modern empire and other things also which is uh, very much later in uh, all these eras 
but uh, what we are seeing uh, over here will be uh, you know the type of uh, training system and other things which are being covered so again a very obvious question name the type of planning used in cities of harappan civilization gridiron transverse radial or circumferential yes uh, lavanya is lavanya are you there okay anvesha yes ma'am yeah, what is the answer to this yes anvesha uh, what is the answer uh, is it gridiron yeah it's gridiron okay so you joined late right yeah a bit late yeah join on time to next time okay lavanya please respond as and when i'm calling your name okay so next what we'll be talking about is the water supply system so you can see over here is that uh, that was also pretty much sorted along with your sanitation and sewerage so talking about all these concepts the water supply system itself was very strong so much so that uh, you had the public bath which was approximately 12 by 9 and here we are talking about wells here we are talking about an efficient uh, supply system of the entire thing so from the wells you can see all these things are connected and you have drains and other things uh, and pipelines constructed of all these things Uh, which are connecting interconnected all these things so like the rooms had aqueducts for water supply and everything here you have wells and small supply systems which are articulated in itself that the connection network system in the entire city is very strong so that is why that is how we are proceeding with that uh, other than that uh, you had various tools you had uh, you know harappa harappan civilization is also famous for the various art forms uh, the sculptures which are there so you had the tools and everything which were being used and uh, as and when because we are talking about the bronze age itself you can see that um, uh, you 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 have uh, different things you had uh, handicraft also so there are different observation which are talking about the metallurgy as well so advancement in all these various sectors go hand in hand with architecture and uh, there is an entrance gate there is a designated entrance gate to the city again you can see the use of bricks and other things in several bonds and everything you have various layers they uh, also you can see um, you know the drain is going over here uh, this type of arch you can see this is the corbelled arch as it is uh, going you know covering the drains and going ahead and all these things uh, so uh, you know there is a good amount of massing and uh, towards the residential complexes also which was being done uh, there was a citadel also which was located uh, you know towards the top of the entire city so as we are going ahead we will also see how the city was divided into two different sectors and uh, how these things are located so over here also you can see that uh, different type of uh, you must have studied uh, english bond so english bond was used in the brick masonry system and uh, as and when you can also see that uh, various types of construction techniques uh, which were located so but by and large you can also see that uh, you know you have uh, uh, different types of uh, mortar which were being used so these were either mud mortar simple ones or lime mortar and as i have told you before as well so it was used with bitumen to make a um, sturdy structure to all these things also they had massive walls the walls used to be very thick uh, the plinth and all were also very significant and uh, all the structure that we have been seeing so as always uh, you know this is a particular type of arch that i have uh, talked about anybody who can identify this yes anvesha sorry anvesha has answered uh, adil and it's called very good yeah very good so this is the corbelled arch so as early as that time we can also see the use of corbelled arch uh, in the brick masonry itself so again i'll repeat that this type of profile the staggered profile if you see which uh, we'll also be seeing in indian temple architecture as well so this type of profile is known as the corbelled arch system and uh, the uh, bricks that also were used were of the proportion of 4 is to 2 is to 1 so again uh, if you are talking about this particular thing so there were different uh, size of bricks which were being used but generally this was the ratio 
but they had different types of bricks which they used to manufacture for different type of buildings depending upon the span the area location and all the other things so it's quite uh, obvious that a lot of detailing would have gone into the entire um, construction of the uh, entire construction of the premises as well as individual buildings so as and when we are proceeding ahead with uh, you know various typologies and various uh, architectural styles we'll also see that as and when the scale is increased it's not that the entire thing is uh, compromised in certain manner but it's very interesting that the public buildings also had a designated uh, you know typology or a style that uh, we we will be studying all over again so this is the indus river also called as the sindhu river located over here this over here is your lower city and uh, this over here is the upper city so if you remember uh, the forum of rome so again towards the hill as an acropolis in greece also so this was the common norm which was being followed uh, so you have of, of course fortification on all the side you had entrance gate at all the cardinal directions and uh, over here so this used to be the main street and this used to be the main street which would lead to the citadel and uh, again over here in the upper city also there are a lot of detailed structures that we will be see uh, there is a very interesting colonnaded structure which is called as the pillared hall over here you will be seeing the public bath system greenery and other things so this entire thing you study the morphology and the urban character this is the grid iron system and uh, as we'll also be seeing you have the citadel located upon the you know um, uh, on the area located on the upper level of the entire thing so again if you're talking about the citadel itself so you have the school uh, you have the school again uh, you have the public bath over here so you can see uh, you know water and all these things and uh, as in we are going ahead there was also a granary which was used to store grain for all the seasons so after the harvest uh, these were public granary system so as to store food and uh, lot of detail would go into that so that the food and the granary was not spoiled and it was saved for another season and perhaps more seasons or year after year in case of drought floods or other extreme situation so in kings reserve or the monarchs river reserve and all these things so we don't have any clue about the political formation of the society which was happening at that time uh but we also see involvement of uh, you know all the uh, there is a large involve, involvement of the people and the residents of the entire city towards forming about all these things so what we can see over here the greenery as in when we'll go into detail we'll just see but for now it is one of the important structures of uh, you know the in this valley civilization as in we are talking about it uh, this is a pillared hall this is called as the assembly hall so it has a lot of pillars similar to um, you know all these uh, characters that we have studied so typical to that then uh, this is probably one of the temples which is located again you have the city wall running through and through the entire thing and this is the canal as in when we are talking about that so um more or less the features are quite the same uh, talking about the babylonian and sumerian dynasty but uh, as we are going into more and more detail about the entire thing we'll just see that some of the other characteristics are always changed so uh, the houses were also detailed they were more or less uh, you know two or three storied structures and we can see the use of bricks as well as timber in the entire thing so you can see that to span off or to go on different levels you will majorly see the use of uh, you know timber and talk uh, going to the up, upper levels and you have joy storing uh, all these things so all the activities uh, or the public spaces were located on the ground floor and the private spaces were located on the first floor and terraces were also used in uh, different aspects so some of the um, you know sites are also being discovered in haryana and uh, other areas as in we are going ahead there is also a proposal of a museum being constructed at lothal so uh, these are various um, you know examples will also give you clue about all these things that we are talking about it so again uh, as we are going ahead uh, you know in detail about all these things we can just see that uh, there are some typical characteristics pertaining to the climatology that we'll see now also for example you have flat roofs uh, you have the use of bricks uh, which is by and large very prominent in the entire area and uh, most bricks that you will see you will have the proportion uh, the ratio i have already told you 4 is to 2 is to 1 uh, 
uh, the proportion is more or less 28 into 14 into 7 so this is uh, one of the major um, you know talking about the entire thing the one of the major dimensions that is being followed through and through in the entire area and uh, also talking about paved floor you have an excellent underground drainage system that is going from the road and connecting all these things so some of the things that we'll also talked about earlier and discussed in terms of city planning are also parallel over here and uh, as we are going ahead so again this is a very interesting uh, feature of this area so this is your public bar uh, goes by the dimension of 12 by 9 meter or 11 by 6.5 because you measure in feet and again it's changed so that's where it will change so this was again a public uh, bath system which was used uh, so because of the lowly climate aspects also because uh, it used to be very hot in summer so you had all these things which were there but again you can see that there was an interaction amongst the society uh, architecture was also corresponding to the type of uh, you know political affirmations which was being held at that time talking about the construction system also you have uh, different things which are located on uh, different levels but uh, as in when you have a different uh, you have a post and lintel system which was called as the tributed system this we have talked about before also the columns also you can see uh, constructed of uh, bricks and everything so um, you know uh, talking about the dimensions also if you are talking in detail uh, the height of the same is also 12 uh, 2.5 meter approximately or 3 meters so somewhere around this is the approximate height and dimension of the entire area and uh, again it's also famously called as the you know ancient uh, public bath of uh, that era so because it gives us clues about waterproofing because uh, again it's a structure which is located around that so bitumen was used for uh, waterproofing in and around the entire ba bathing arena and uh, the uh, areas in um, you know surrounding this was also a part of this system so this is one of what public bath systems uh, we have studied before had advanced systems such as the cooling system and for hot water you used to have some other areas uh, but here this is as this is one of the earliest examples of the public bath we'll see that the areas are designated in that sense only but the use of advancement and technology in terms of understanding the ratio scale and symmetry of that era is by and far very much sorted so um, you know because um, you also see that uh, as we have i have talked about so let's just go to the plan and see about the detailing and everything else of this area so as we are talking about this so you can see that there is a particular plaster uh, which is very thick of bitumen is already being done we have several steps on um, you know all these two sides which are leading towards the bathing arena and there are different steps located on all these things so quite and well resembling the step well as well but on a smaller proportion you can see that all these things are very well sorted so this is the plan of the great bath itself and uh, this is the main um, you know bathing area but all of this is very prominently surrounded by columns on all these sides uh, again um, constructed of brick but uh, because brick uh, you know tension and compression you have to calculate very well when you are talking about columns so columns are good in the construction when you are doing with stone monolithic columns are far more better and sturdy so that is why they have not lasted very long but uh, in terms of talking about all these things talking about these corbelled uh, you know arches which were used in covering the drains and our other things so that uh, it does not fall off very easily so these are some of the clues that uh, we have seen and uh, how it is going ahead so one more example that um, we'll be seeing in the other things so the second one that we'll be studying is the pillared hall also called as the assembly hall the remains are not uh, there in detail as such but you can see uh, you know clue of major pillars of uh, grand scale which are being located at that era so this is a google earth satellite image of all these things and it is again a conjectural plan of uh, how these things will be located so for you to just get an idea about uh, the entire character of what probably would have been so this uh, is uh, a huge hall which is roughly a 24 square meter pillared hall and as we are talking about it we'll also be seeing that the material will remain consistent in the entire thing but uh, as we are talking about uh, you know the ruler's coat and other details so over here you can see that it has a characteristic feature of this you have a ruler's coat 
again uh, you will have uh, kiln bricks which were being used so these bricks are more refined because these are not sun baked bricks uh, so they are more uh, they are uh, you know baked bricks so they are more sturdy and all these things they are more finished you can see clear finish of all these things also uh, exposed brick masonry but again very neat finish and uh, you know sev through several centuries and millenniums all these things are still standing so of course it's very advanced because it's it's withstood uh, you know several climatic adversities as well so all these things uh, gives us a clue about uh, what what went into you know talking about this uh, if you're talking about uh, if you're really interested in oroville's architecture sustainable architecture and other things also this is the site to study so because it uses very simple techniques which are um, which are quite effective and environment friendly and long lasting so all these things we'll be seeing in uh, you know uh, this area so the third um, case example that we'll be seeing from the harappan civilization is the green tree so green tree we have already seen the location in the citadel citadel on the rear corner so it's away from the river and located in the southern side so that uh, there is no opening or uh, you know in um, these cells in which all these things are located but again you have some of the other uh, area in which the accessibility is being drawn to so you have the bathing drain uh, from the great bath uh, you are um, you know this is being supplied and everything so the great bath was not uh, you know functioning alone and all these things it was connected to various uh, supply systems also so talking about uh, you know you have alcoves recesses so all the accessibility part and again being divided into different hierarchy wise sections and use of uh, you know timber sockets joinery joist and all these things on different locations so you have the battered wall and other systems which were being used all these things are divided into equal sections and uh, as you can see over here so these were divided into several sections in which the granary was uh, stored and as in we are going ahead you can see that uh, all these things were transportation loading and unloading you have uh, several you have a different platform in which all these things were there so now joist timber joist or sockets were used so as to provide air circulation um, you know under the wooden floor so that uh, that you will also be seeing mostly in dry climatic regions if you go to kashmir so they have this uh, uh, you know wooden uh, chamber which is located on the mezzanine level where they uh, dry out or their uh, reservoirs in terms of almonds or dry fruits walnuts etc so the same concept is being used there also so as uh, to res to resist uh, you know the carrying or or to resist moisture basically so the moisture does not seep in so ensure that air is circulated and the food doesn't go waste so there were um, uh, timber blocks which were being used in all these uh, different sections and different levels as in when we are talking about again and uh, there were two blocks on which all these things were located and uh, they had six story stone rooms on every level and uh, that is why all these things were there again this was you made of burnt brick only because uh, these were important buildings so you had to have um you know materials which are superior in nature compared to all the other examples that we have seen before so this again as you can see the plan of all these things so the timber joinery and joisting and all these things have gone but you can see from the clues as uh, how these things were allocated and you can see on the junctions also probably how the entire thing must have been so okay prior starting to that as uh, we talked about in the previous class only so to uh, before moving on to our next topic let's just revise very quickly uh, our history of architecture from the earlier one uh, that is uh, just take a quick revision which is very brief because considering the time that we also have to cover major topics so very quickly we'll just uh, talk about you know two three important things and we'll talk about we'll just brush up all these things again and again in different classes so now to start with we'll just start with uh, you know what we have studied in previous classes and go ahead with the same so the first question which is the largest masonry dome in the world please uh, volunteer yourself if you know the answer or else uh, i'll ask i mean any which way so yeah maybe uh, shruti which is the largest masonry dome in the world florence cathedral okay uh, adil ma'am florence cathedral okay shruti Oh, sorry uh, anvesha 
मैम फिर ऑरेंज का ठीक है ओके रितु एंड लावण्य क्लास बिकॉज वेन वी वी डेंट गो इन टू द डिटेल ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन बट फॉर श्योर आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट दिस सो फ्लोरेंस फ्लोरेंस कथीड्रल इज द लार्जेस्ट ब्रिक मेसनरी डोम इन द एंटायर वर्ल्ड सो कंसिडरिंग इट द because it cannot be constructed in stone stone we talked about compression tension and all these uh, meridian forces which are uh, you know acting in the dome itself so that is why you have to have ribbed construction you have to introduce different ribs which were there and uh, brunelleschi was the architect who constructed the florence cathedral what is the other name for this this cathedral Yes. What is the other name? Find out. So, uh, you know, because of the name of the deity also, which is located in that, so it is also called as uh, San Maria. Um, you know, located in that area. So that is what. And uh, because we are talking about Renaissance, it is important structure because Renaissance started from Florence itself in Italy, not from Rome. So that is why it is very important. so read about it i think i have shared one um, a very short clipping of how the concepts was gone uh, have you received that i think it was uploaded in your classroom have you received the link to that yes yes ma'am yeah so yes ma'am okay so it was there in only okay so pay attention it was the florence cathedral pantheon is a large structure but it's not the largest masonry dome in the world okay so don't get confused next identify the architect from the illustration bonini brunelleschi leonardo da vinci or michelangelo yes adil if bernini. you don't know this guess plaza was designed by bernini okay ritu Yes, Ritu. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I guess uh, third. Okay, Lavanya. Brunelleschi. Second. Okay. Shruti. Because it's the Plaza Bernini. Okay, Anvesha. स्क्वेर Yeah. So we talked about all these things. Now, who contributed in what? So the square is Bernini. Uh, it was designed by Bernini, constituting of uh, certain type of column, which I will not tell you because find out. And I told you in class also. Okay, so there is a huge colonnade uh, lo locating about this. There is an obelisk, a monolithic obelisk, which is located in the center. and uh, this again was uh, designed by bernini so pay attention because when i teach i go uh, i tell everything in detail so pay attention to little things and make your own notes after that revise these please make as concise notes as possible but then do revise your notes again so which is the column type in st peter square ionic corinthian composite or doric yes lavanya quickly quickly doric okay ritu yeah ma'am it's doric only shruti doric anvesha yes ma'am doric adil ma'am i am confusing corinthian and doric 